There seems to be some confusion out there as to what transmission does what and how they work. We're gonna see if we can clear that up for you guys. Hey guys, it's Josh at Kenworth of Richfield. I really want to thank you for tuning back in this week. Always glad to have you guys along. When I released the video a month and a half or so back, I talked about automated versus manual transmissions. And I saw that there was a lot of confusion about automated transmissions. A lot of people went just straight to thinking about automatics. And they're very different. So today we're gonna to look at each one of these trucks because each one of these trucks has a different transmission in it. We're gonna talk about the applications for each transmission. We're gonna talk about how each one of them functions. We're gonna give you a little bit of a comparison. And as always, it's my job to hopefully help you figure out what's gonna work the best for your business. So without further ado, let's dive into it. You may be asking why I have the trucks in the order that I do. I didn't do it for aesthetic reasons, because if I did, the W990 would be on the end because the biggest hood, then the T880, then the T680, and the T270 here. So why did I group them this way? This one's an automatic. This one's an automated. That one's a manual. And then the T880 down in the end, that one's an automated. Which also sounds like a weird grouping. But as we dive into this, you're gonna figure out why they're grouped the way that they are. In this, let's start talking about the automatic transmission here in the T270, because this one is totally different from anything else. This T270 has an automatic transmission in it. This one is an Allison 2500 RDS transmission. Now with this, this is a torque converter style transmission this is very similar to an automotive transmission. Now granted, it's about three times the size, but it's similar in design and how they work. With this, there is a torque converter that goes between the transmission and the engine, and that's what allows you to idle, and that's what allows you those other things. With that, the torque converter actually allows for some torque multiplication in there, which is really difficult for me to say. Glad I got through that in the first take. With that, you can run five or six speeds effectively, whether it be a T270 like this, or whether it be a six axle dump truck. You can use the torque multiplication in order to get a smooth power delivery all the way through. Now, I said smooth power delivery because that is what automatic transmissions specialize in. It is very car-like in terms of you've got power the whole time. There's no let off when you take off. When you go from gear to gear, the torque converter allows for some slippage and on the planetary gear sets, the clutch packs and bands that are on those allow for some slippage also, so that way they can change smoothly and seamlessly. If you want power that starts from the moment you hit the throttle till the moment you let off with no real let up in it, this is the transmission that you wanna go with. So let's talk about some of the pros and cons here of the automatic transmission. And once again, remember this is automatic. With this, it's push button, go. Push the button, push the throttle, push the brake. That's all you have to do with this. It's totally gonna to control everything else. Now in that, this is by far going to have the smoothest power delivery. Guys in tanks, really do like this because when it takes off, it's just constant power, as I mentioned before. Now, the other thing that especially these Allison transmissions are known for is just being bulletproof. Don't overheat it, keep the fluid changed, and this transmission is probably gonna outlast some of the rocks that are in the driveway to your workshop. One of the other big things with the Allison transmission is that you have great control with it. You can inch it forward a little bit if you need to an inch back if you need to. Backing into a dock is very easy because there's not necessarily a mechanical connection there. It's more like a hydraulic connection between the back of the engine and the drive shaft. 
Now, on the downside of the Allison transmissions, some guys feel that they don't have that direct connection with it, and I can understand that. There's a bit of a fluid feeling in the driveline with it. Now, that's changed and gotten much more solid over the years, but it's not quite that direct connection between your right foot and what's happening at the back end of the truck. Also in that, the Allison transmission, because of its durability, because of the technology in it, it's a fair bit more expensive. For you, it's deciding if the values that it creates otherwise fit in with your business and create enough value to justify the cost. So guys, that brings us down to the next two. And we actually skipped one in there and I'll explain why we did that in a second. This one's a manual. This one's an automated. Now, once again, I'm gonna put that emphasis on the word automated because we've already covered an automatic. An automatic typically refers to a torque converter style transmission. So this being a manual, you guys know what that means. This is an 18 speed truck. There's a shifter through the floor. There's three pedals there for you to mess with. If you don't know what a manual transmission is in a truck, Google it. On the flip side of that, we've got the automated transmission back here. Now, what makes that automated? It's actually the same case. It's the same internals. It's the same bearings. It's the same gears. It's very much the same transmission, except instead of having a shifter stick through the floor, there's two solenoids mounted to the top where the shifter would go. Those solenoids are computer controlled. The same is true for the clutch system. That is controlled, once again, by the computer. So this is an automated manual transmission. It's not an automatic because it doesn't have a torque converter. This still has a clutch. It still has normal gears to it. It doesn't have planetary assemblies to it. It's a regular old manual transmission. It's just operated by the computer. And that's the biggest thing that I think a lot of guys find confusing when I say automated transmission. It's a manual transmission that's automated, whereas that was designed to be automatic. Is that starting to make sense? If it is, do me a favor, let me know in the comments. If it's not, let me know too. And we'll, we're going to dive into this a little bit further with yet another type of transmission. This always has and always will have the stick coming through the floor as a manual transmission. Three pedals, manual transmission. This is a manual transmission that Eaton developed some solenoids and some great computer programming to control it for you. So originally, this started out as a manual that just evolved into something that's very driver friendly. This from day one was designed to be controlled by the computer. And in the way that it's controlled and the way that it operates, they really got it right. You could tell that they did the homework on this one. So when we're comparing all of these, what's going to work better than what for what? Well, let's start diving in and doing some comparisons side by side here. So why have I isolated these two trucks? It's because they're very different from the other two in many ways. This is the only torque converter transmission that we have. This is the only one that was designed from the ground up as an automated transmission. Now, where is each one of these going to shine? This one, the automatic transmission does phenomenal when it comes to smoothness and control. You really just inch perfect. And that's why you see this in so many hook lift and other rollback applications is because you've got that inch super easy control. It's also not going to be hard on a clutch when you're trying to do something like that. Where's that one going to shine? This one, with it being designed as an automated transmission from the get-go, shifts really, really fast. And the computer system that they have backing it up is almost predictive. So in that, if you're looking for the fuel mileage and maybe a little less upfront cost with still really good durability, maybe that's the way for you to go. If you're in and out of a lot of really tight places and that's where you spend a bulk of your time, then that's the way for you to go. This, once again, 
it's about finding the right fit for what you're going to do with your truck. So coming down here, the manual obviously is also in a league of its own, but it shares so many parts with the Ultra Shift Automated. So to me, these two have a lot in common, but which one are you going to choose? It really depends on how you want to drive. For me, on a daily basis, it's tough to beat an Ultra Shift. But once again, what am I doing with it? Am I running it as a dump truck? Am I hauling a trailer? Am I hauling heavy equipment? These are questions that really need to be answered on your own. This is something where I can see reasons to go with both. But if I've got my choice, there's another video that you can see the link to down below where I, I told you which one I'm gonna choose. So that brings the comparison to the Endurant and the Ultra Shift. Are they similar? Yes and no. And I know that's a fuzzy answer, but I'm kind of going to let you guys decide on this. The Ultra Shift transmission is a great platform because it allows a regular manual transmission to be turned into something that's automated, which if you ask any driver out there, once they get used to it, it's tough for them not to like it, especially these new ones. When you go over to the Endurant transmission, it really, it's, it's changed the game. It's changed how an automated transmission works. It's really closed the gap between automated and automatic and how they work, how they function, and still left pretty wide gap in terms of the price there. So it depends on the application. If I'm running a dump truck, like that, yeah, I'm probably putting an 8LL Ultra Shift in it. If I'm going over the road, you can be pretty sure that I'm going to have the Endurant in it. You starting to see why I put each truck out here with this trans... You get it? Good. I'm hoping that I was able to help you guys understand a little bit better what some of the differences are in these between the automatic, the automated, the manual, and well, once again, the automated. They're four very different transmissions in a lot of ways. Maybe it's three and a half very different transmissions. They all have a distinct place, and that's why I'm not necessarily gonna call out a winner in this, just because it depends on what you're doing. If you're running a hook lift or an around town application, it's tough to beat that Allison. If I'm going over the road, you can be pretty sure I'm using the Endurant. I'm hauling heavy equipment around in and out of job sites in awkward places. Yeah, manual's the way to go. If I'm running a dump truck locally, you could bet I'm gonna have the Ultra Shift Plus in there. It's really just about what you do. And these transmissions will all work in varying applications. It's about figuring out what fits your business, where you go, and your budget. Three pretty simple questions that always seem really hard to answer. With that, if you've got questions, if there's something that you'd like me to dive into a bit further, always happy to do that. You guys talking about the automated automatic stuff, that's what got me to do this video. So do me a favor, put something in the comments below. Even if you don't have any questions, I still love hearing from you guys there. If you think we earned it, give me the thumbs up on this one too. Make sure you're subscribed, get that notifications bell. It's gonna ring about 11 o'clock, or I mean 11.30 on a Thursday. As always, stay safe out there, keep rubber side down. Catch you on the flip side.